Back to this special edition of Politics Unplugged, looking ahead at 2023, bringing the guests back for, for another segment. As we mentioned uh, uh, in the last segment, we were going to talk a little bit about this legislature. It's going to be controlled by Republicans. It is kind of shifted more to the right. Um, I want to start with Dan. Like, what are you hearing or some of the priorities that collectively we're going to see coming out of the legislature there with this Republican majority? Well, I do think there's some issues that there could be common ground on depending on how the new governor uh, approaches this session. I think on water, there's a desire to, to do more there. I think on transportation and infrastructure. I think that um, this is, uh, again, something we haven't seen in some time. Um, these majorities are slim. Uh, Republicans will have to keep their caucuses together. And really, both caucuses are very divided. You know, there were a lot of primaries. There were a lot of moderate Democrats that got swept out. Mm -hmm. And th there was a similar situation on the Republican side. So I think that party unity may be out the door in some cases. And that will be really interesting uh, to watch. And I think if the Republicans are smart, they will approach this from the standpoint of saying, um, we do need a check and a balance. We can't have one party control. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And it does give them the opportunity, I think, in the next election cycle to pick up several legislative seats that were left on the table and increase their majorities. Yes, speaking of election cycles, we heard a lot of talk from some Republicans that maybe they want to do more election reform bills. Uh, but given the fact that what we saw in the election here in November, we saw a lot of the you know so-called election deniers that got wiped out. Uh, right. here in the state for the statewide elections as well across the country. Does that put a chilling effect on some of those plans to introduce that legislation, do you think? Oh, I think the loonies days are numbered in, term of, in terms of some of this wacko election reform. Um, but what we can agree on is what we see uh, Stephen Richer, Maricopa County recorder, and Adrian Fontes, new Secretary of State, already discussing. How do we get results faster? Yes. How do we reduce Please. it? I am so excited yeah. that Republicans are worried about lines at polling places now. It's the greatest day. Mm -hmm. So how do we reduce the number of lines? How do we get things moving faster? How do we get results quicker? Yeah, and Dennis, I think to Stacy's point, um, that is an area that there can be agreement on, and I think the position of some that everything's fine, mm -hmm. that it, we can wait two weeks. I mean, as you're seeing with a gubernatorial transition, you can't do that. You need the time. Mm -hmm. And so we do need results faster, and the status quo is not going to work. Okay, and, uh, you know, a lot of talk, too, a lot of speculation. Katie Hobbs is going to be using the veto pen a lot, and it harkens back again to the old Napolitano yeah. stuff. Is that something we're going to see? Is that being overrated a little bit? I hope so. I was telling my ma she should buy stock in, what, 3M, whoever makes Sharpies. I would love to see those... Um, be used more often than they have mm -hmm. even in the previous administration. <laughs> and I will say this is, again, an opportunity for Republicans if they approach it from a standpoint of there, there are things that will be very uncomfortable for mm -hmm. her to veto, but she will feel like she needs to. I do think that, um, that her team is going to come at this from more of a progressive standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I think if Republicans are smart, they'll think about what bills can we send up that will be vetoed. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing we saw during the Napolitano era were a lot of referrals to the ballot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be back. I think next cycle there could be 20 plus things on the ballot yeah. um, because that, that will be another mechanism. And I think to your earlier point, though, that dynamics is, and times have changed so drastically. Yeah. I mean, who knows? There's going to be a lot of those so-called political messaging bills coming from the legislature, daring Hobbs to go ahead and veto that. And they're going to just be, uh, you know, uh, keeping all track of all this stuff, getting ready to, you know, uh, pull it back out in a few years when she's back up and, and, and running again. Um, I want to ask you, you know, when you're looking at the legislature at this point, do you see any Republicans that could help uh, Hobbs build a, major a majority there to get some of this legislation through? I mean, certainly I hope so. I mean, mm -hmm. I hope a Shope or a Gowan or some of the folks that have typically um, put state over party are willing to cross the aisle. It's it, To your point, it's how hot is this political football mm -hmm. and how willing are they to compromise and give this governor a win? And mm -hmm. how willing is this governor to compromise? Mm -hmm. And that will be a big question. So it's also on her and her team to lead with positions and issues that can get consensus and that aren't just far left, 
crazy progressive policies. And let me Those ask you this. And, and, <laughs> and let me ask you this, though. Maybe it's a cynical take on this, but do you think, you know, we saw this, you know, in D.C., and you see a lot of the things you used to see in D.C. filter down to the state legislatures. Do you think the goal, again, um, this legislature coming in is more about making sure that Hobbs is a one term governor than maybe it is about fixing some of these problems out there? No, I think that people want to get things done. And I think that uh, that's why everybody runs. It's a lot of work. Uh, and but governing is hard. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I think Governor Ducey made it look easy, but it's not. And so it will be a real test of her leadership of how she can bring folks together at the Capitol and around what issues. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap the wrap up that segment right there, but 